a wrestling feud is good or well thought out, it can paper over a lot of the cracks. Even if the two people involved suck, a well designed storyline can cover all of that and we as fans can buy in. Unfortunately, that also means the opposite is true and boy howdy, when that happens, expect the worst. The real issue when these go down is that WWE has a habit of trying to turn this nonsense around, meaning the narrative goes on well too long even though it sucked in the first place. It's like being punched in the face and kicked on the ground simultaneously. If you don't know, that's not good. I'm Simon from WhatCulture.com and this is 8 Awful WWE Feuds That Choke The Life Out Of Fans. Number 8 Jerry Lawler vs Michael Cole No surprise right, and I'm guessing in many ways you don't even need me to tell you. But when WWE decided that yes, Jerry Lawler deserved a Wrestlemania match, seeing as he had joined the company in 1993, for some reason it should be against Michael Cole. The commentator. Right. If this was just a one and done, maybe it would have been alright. It was silly enough to be entertaining and having Cole on the end of an ass whooping isn't the worst idea ever. Most people would enjoy that. But that's not what happened and instead we got it all the way prior to Mania 27 through to Over the Limit a few months later. A few months! There were so many ridiculous swerves as well like getting JR and Jack Swagger involved and introducing nonsense like a kiss my foot stipulation. It was dead long before WWE cut the cord and at that point most fans wanted to be dead too. This sucked. Number 7 Titus O'Neil vs Darren Young On paper this could have been alright. Titus O'Neil and Darren Young had a history together and having Bob Backlund involved would have been the icing on the cake. It wasn't alright mind, it was rubbish. The real problem was that WWE just never went all in with it so the end result was a filler feud that was done before it even got started. It was just there for the sake of being there as the two argued and Backlund acted all weird in the corner. It was clear within a week there was no demand for this, especially as we'd already seen this once in 2014, and after a few years, not much had changed. It was empty, flat and yet for some reason went on for a long time before just vanishing into the abyss. Great. Number 6 Rusev vs Dolph Ziggler What happens when you do things just because and throw all the bells and whistles in there too? This. When Rusev and Dolph Ziggler were programmed together in the summer of 2015, it was just awful and it really shouldn't have been. This is two excellent workers being pitted against each other, but WWE felt like this was the perfect time to also go all soap opera on us and that didn't work. For starters they split up Lana and Rusev which no one wanted to see and then they moved Lana to be Ziggler's new girlfriend and shifted Summer Rae to be the Bulgarian's new partner. This meant every encounter had to have the four of them going around in circles and it often came across like Rusev and Summer were the faces here because it was so poorly managed. If it wasn't for some of Rusev's lines there would have been no saving grace here. It pretty much went on for the whole summer and then Lana annoyed WWE officials with a social media post and it was killed. Thank goodness. Number 5 The Big Show vs Randy Orton In late 2013 everyone loved Daniel Bryan. You loved him, I loved him, your mum loved him, that old chestnut. The only person that didn't was WWE so they did everything they could to throw him out the window. This is why instead of going with Brian during this year, all of a sudden new WWE Champion Randy Orton was pitted against The Big Show. Right. While he had technically joined Daniel's crusade against the authority so it did all tie in, no one wanted to see this and it became more frustrating than anything else, especially when the giant started stealing Brian's yes chance for himself. You thief. Unsurprisingly people didn't give two hoots about this and it was just another attempt to not use Brian how everyone wanted him to be used. Why nobody cared. Number 4 Triple H vs Chris Jericho While Triple H vs Chris Jericho may not have choked the life out of fans in the traditional sense, it did start to grate the more it went on, mostly due to terrible decisions by all involved. When the game returned to the WWE following his quad injury in 2002, it was awesome. His Madison Square Garden reception was a moment for the ages and it seemed that having him win the Rumble and then lift the title that year's WrestleMania was perfect booking. Everything was in place for a nice there was even the ideal heel champion ready to go as Chris Jericho sneered his way as the top guy in the company. But then came the dumb decisions. For starters, Stephanie McMahon was tacked onto Y2J which made no sense given their history and it made Jericho a bit player in a world title feud. He never felt like a true threat to Triple H so when it came to their main event at WrestleMania 18, which was given an extra gut punch after fans went nuts for Hogan vs The Rock, it fell completely flat. Fans hadn't bought in to begin with so they sure as hell weren't going to now. Such a wasted opportunity. Number 3 Randy Orton vs John Cena Randy Orton and John Cena took each other on so many times in 2009 it's not even funny. It happened time after time after time after time again but eventually it felt like we were being trolled. 
Who wanted to see 45,789 matches in one calendar year? No one. That's who. We had a SummerSlam bout, then an I Quit affair at Breaking Point, then it was Hell in a Cell, then we had an Iron Man stipulation. Furthermore, this was the era of real pay-per-view, so fans were expected to pay $50 a month to watch the same old stuff. It's nuts! These two were able to have good matches against each other here and there, of course, but if you run anything into the ground, it's going to soon become the law of diminishing returns. How could anyone possibly keep things feeling fresh after all this? Number 2 The Undertaker vs The Giant Gonzalez The Giant Gonzalez wore a weird suit that had hair stuck to it. In many ways, that's all you need to know. Who was ever going to give a sh**? When he did turn up in the WWE in 1993, however, he was put into a feud with The Undertaker and it was just bad all round. This was obvious from day one, yet WWE kept it going for ages putting the two against each other at WrestleMania 9, and then again at that year's SummerSlam, which had the added bonus of being a rest in peace encounter. We will never know why this was extended, because it was a dud before the first punch was thrown, and today is even worse. Complete bust. Number 1 Triple H vs Scott Steiner At one point, this feud was pretty great. As Triple H and Steiner played I Have More Muscles Than You, there was a time where I actually thought it was quite entertaining and looked forward to it each week. It was just so ludicrous then the problems arrived. The first was that the Steiner of 2003 just wasn't the man we remembered and neither was Triple H. Plus the pair didn't like each other so there were just obstacles from the off. On top of that it went on too long. A couple of brawls would have been fine but we had them at the Royal Rumble and then again at No Way Out and neither were any good. So why did we try for that second time anyway? It's alright because the pose down they had on Raw one night was awesome. But yeah, the fans didn't buy into this at all and yet we still had months worth of content around it. it. Makes no sense. So that was our video. Thank you for watching. Please do feel free to click on anything happening around my head or something terrible might happen to this dog. Is that you too sweeting me, bro? Ugh. Disgusting. <laughs> That's really bad.